Hi everyone, this is my Kontsovka. I made this myself out of a branch of elder. It's a Slovak wooden flute and it's rather unusual in that it has no finger holes at all. The way it's played is just by varying the air pressure through the mouthpiece like this. And by covering the bottom end like this. As you can tell, I'm not very good at this yet. I need a lot more practice. Anyway, so I made this myself. If you want to see how, carry on watching. Okay, I'm going to be trying to hollow out this piece of elder branch here. Um, elder's an interesting wood because it has this pithy centre, which is very soft and easily removed. I tried this before, and I used a 12mm auger bit for it, and it was reasonably successful except I did find that uh, because I'm working with green wood the, the surface area of the, the outside of this auger bit meant it, 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 was, it had a tendency to bind in the um, inside the wood. So I'm going to have another go using a 19mm spade bit, nice long one, 400mm, should get me halfway down there from that way and the other half from the other end. And I'm hoping that what will happen here is the, the lead point of the spade bit will follow that, that really soft pithy centre, sort of path of least resistance and will keep the, the boring very central within the branch. So I just need to trim up the ends, get my drill set up and then we'll have a go. Okay so I've got quite an unconventional setup here. I've had to mount the dr drill vertically and I'm going to feed the wood onto the drill bit. There are two reasons for that. One is that I just don't think I'd be able to manage manipulating a, a long drill bit into the end of a long piece of wood and keeping it straight. Um, the other is obviously that this, unlike the auger bit, the spade bit doesn't clear its own waste. So as I'm drilling into this wood I need gravity to, to carry the sawdust out of the, uh, out of the tube that I'm drilling. So hopefully that will work. So what I'm going to do is spin up this drill and very carefully feed the wood onto the end of it. I've had to tilt it slightly so that it clears the edge of the table and we'll see how we get on. Okay, never attempt anything without the gloves. Lovely. Actually very nice straight hole, I don't know if you can see that, all the way through. Fairly nice even walls of the thing. I think that's mission accomplished. So I've got my piece of elder and I've managed to drill a hole right the way through of it. What I'm going to do now to help it dry a bit quicker is take off the bark very carefully just with a pocket knife. Just going to slice off the bark. Really, I guess I probably should wait and do this when it's dry, but it will take so much longer to dry if I do. Okay, we're nearly done now. I'm just going to finish up and then we'll leave that to dry somewhere in the garage and we'll see where we get. I was tempted to put it between centres on a lathe and try turning it to actually take down the thickness but I think there's so little wall thickness there now actually and it's not perfectly straight I think I would end up breaking through and then we'd have to do that all over again and that was hard work drilling this so I don't intend to repeat it. Okay so it's been about a week since I uh, drilled this out and set it to dry it's actually dried out really well now we've got a tiny little crack that's appeared there interestingly as it dried the crack opened up and, it, and then it closed up again, but I'm going to fill that with epoxy. Um, the rest of it's taken on an interesting texture, either you can't have this, 
Um, it's taken on an interesting texture. It's got lots of little sort of pits and bumps in it. So I'm going to give it a good sand down on the outside, fill that crack, sand on the inside, and then start making the instrument. Okay, that's only an 80 grit wheel, but it's actually taken off a lot of the irregularities on the surface there. Obviously I'll go over with finer grades. <coughs> it's also taken off a lot of the discoloration, although I think I'll probably try and leave some of that on there, because it's quite an interesting pattern. Sanding inside the tube, I had hoped I'd be able to tape a bit of sandpaper to this threaded studding and then put it in the drill and rotate it, but uh, I can't manage to get anything to stick to the sandpaper. So plan B is just to roll that up really tight around the, the metal bar and do it by hand, like so. And it seems to be working tolerably well. It's producing dust, it's, it's actually cleaned up the inside of the bore. Actually, it's very smooth in there. That's really good. Meanwhile, I need to make a plug for the end of the flute. So I've got this nice little bit of hazel that I'm just going to cut a chunk out of, and then I'll just, I think I'll, I could stick it on the lathe and try and turn it round, but to be honest, it's such a short piece, I'm just going to sand it, I think. I'll probably chisel it first and then sand it round. So I'm just going to avoid these cracks Take a piece that hasn't got any split in it. Okay, definitely gloves for this bit. Now we're getting pretty close to a proper fit now, so I just need to take it easy and just sand off the very smallest little pieces now. Okay, so there we go, that's that little bit done. Now it doesn't need to be very long, that's why I haven't sanded the whole plug to length. It only needs to go in that far, because on this type of flute, the, uh, the voicing hole is just there. So, I now need to mark out where my voicing hole is going to be. It's going to be about that far in. Okay, so there we go. So that's the position of the voicing hole. So we need to cut a piece out here, about that big. All right, here we go then. So I'm just going to cut. Yeah, that's good. That's going okay. And then this piece here has to be cut at an angle. Okay, I think that's probably about as far as I dare to go with the knife. Okay, now I'm just going to work with a little piece of sandpaper folded up just to tidy up that voicing hole. It's just a little bit woolly on some of the edges. And what I've also done is just cut a very shallow channel into that side of the um, into that side of the timber, so that it encourages the air to flow across the um, divide there. So let's just give it a little test. Yeah, I'm getting a note out of it now. So. using ordinary PVA glue here. The reason for that is that I don't really want to use epoxy because while this is just in position I'm going to put my mouth against it just to test it out and I really don't want a face full of epoxy whereas PVA is relatively benign.
Okay. I'm happy with that where it is, so we'll just leave that to set. Right, the glue's dried and I just trim that plug off flush with the end there. And last thing to do is just a little bit of sanding on the ends. I've sanded the body smooth. It is traditional to decorate these with swirly lines and patterns and flowers and things, but I actually like the pattern of this wood so much, I think I'm just going to leave it plain. I think I'll just finish it with a bit of wax or oil. I actually really like that pattern on the wood there. Sort of reminds me of leopard spots or something. Perfect. There we go, look at that. So there's the little windway just there. Nice flat top, and this instrument is uh, traditionally played upside down, so with the uh, voicing hole at the bottom. And there is a reason for that, which I'll explain in a moment. So here we are, I've finished making my Konsovka. Let's just give it a little play before I actually give it a finish. As I mentioned earlier, you play it upside down. The reason that it's not undercut that you play like a normal flute here is that actually you play it and you press it against your top lip, and you can hold it with one hand, and presumably play a tambourine or a drum or something with the other hand. So let's have a go. Obviously going to take a little bit of mastery. I'm going to put, give it a coat of wax polish. I've made this wax polish myself. I was going to show you how to how I did that, but my camera ran out of battery. So all this is is beeswax mixed with a little bit of linseed oil, and I'm just going to rub that onto the the wood, and then buff it off, and it should come up to a very nice soft shine. That's good, that's good. A very nice smooth sheen coat. I'm going to do the mouthpiece as well, and the reason I picked beeswax and linseed oil is that they are both edible. So, given that this is going to be in contact with my mouth, I thought rather than using some sort of varnish or polyurethane or something that's a dubious edibility. I'll uh, go for something made of ingredients that are actually known to be edible. Very nice. Well, I'm really pleased with that. That's uh, taken me a little while to get that right, but I'm actually really pleased with that end result. I think it's actually quite an interesting and pretty little instrument, and maybe I will learn to play some kind of tune on it. Uh, won't make you suffer with any more of that.